Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. We're now halfway through the year and how that time's flown and what a year it's been for me so far already. I started a new job back in January, of course, as you'll know. So that means that in mid-July, it'll be six months since I started working with Emily Davison as a support worker for a journalism role. And that's still going really well. I've got a nice little update to share with you on that in this video. And I've also been getting up to various other bits and pieces out and about, either with Emily or with other people or by myself. There's been lots going on. And there's bits and pieces I've been watching on TV as usual too, of course. As usual, there's a lot more detail in my blog as well. There's a few big posts I've been making as well as this favourites post. So there's lots for you to read in relation to this. Nothing here is sponsored and one item is gifted because it was a press trip that I went on. But other than that, yeah, all opinions are my own regardless of whether it's gifted or not. And yeah, I'm just going to crack on with it and I hope you find it interesting. So we'll start with uh, the work update. Um, as time has gone on, my hours have gone up from 22 to 25 hours per week. And now access to work have improved a further increase to 30 hours per week, which is great for me. Um, because the wage is quite good, it means I'm now earning just a bit more than I was on my old job in annual terms. So that's great. So yeah, I'm financially stable, all thanks to Emily. And yeah, as I say, the job's going really nicely. Uh, there's a nice variety to the work we're doing and Emily's doing really well with her diploma course as well as making progress on the work itself. So I'm really pleased for her. And um, there is a nice little update on a story we, I reported on a few videos ago as well, because back in April, I mentioned that I joined Emily when she did an interview with a lady called Taylor Notcut, a blind musician who was searching for a guide dog. And she has now been matched with a guide dog. So she is now sharing her journey with Jilly on her Instagram page. So I'll link to that in the description below. Do go and follow her. Congratulations to Taylor on that she deserves that and then I did get to go on a little press trip with Emily as well because she was invited to go along to London Zoo for their Friday night openings that they do over the summer we got to go to the uh, first one of those and this is basically where the zoo opens on Friday evenings for adults only so you can explore the whole campus without any kids getting in the way and there's food stalls and there's bars you can get drinks from and there's events going on as well and talks you can listen to and stuff like that so we had a nice evening together walking around there looking at some of the animals and you have seen some of the footage perhaps I posted on my YouTube channel recently that was captured from that evening so yeah it was a nice little evening out together looking at that obviously i'm a member of the zoo anyway but you have to pay to go to those nighttime events they're not included in the daytime membership that you get if you've got a membership card so it was nice to be able to get a freebie to go to the evening event to see what that was like and yeah if you like london zoo it's definitely uh, well worth going to that and get there early because obviously the animals get put to bed about nine o'clock ish some a bit earlier some a bit later so if you get there early about six o'clock when it opens onwards from there then you've got the best chance of seeing the animals so yeah that was nice and it is also worth saying that there are very accommodating with Emily's guide dog Rosie as well. It has someone come up to us at the entrance just to verify that Rosie looked healthy and had had all her recent medical checks that she needed to, stuff like that. And we were advised just to stay away from one or two areas like the walkthroughs and one or two other places, but that was totally understandable. Obviously, where animals are concerned. So yeah, it was absolutely fine. And Rosie was perfectly happy around the animals. In fact, some of them were even taking an interest in her. So yeah, she was absolutely fine. And then Emily and I also had a day trip to the seaside when we went to Margate for a day. And that was really nice. This wasn't for any press reasons, although Emily has written an article about it anyway about some of the things she saw there but um, yeah it's just a nice little day out really to get out of London and go to the sea it's not a place I'd go back to necessarily but certainly it's well worth visiting once to see some of the things they've got there in particular we were very impressed with the shell grotto they've got there which is an underground chamber where the walls and the altar room in the middle of all these different corridors that link to it are all decorated with millions of shells and it looks really really stunning really really impressive and the fascinating thing is that nobody knows why it's there there's no documentation from history to say who built it or why so it's really very interesting it could be a place of worship or for secret meetings or for any other reason really so there's some interesting theories in there but it's just beautiful to look at so we were really impressed by that and we also liked the bus cafe on the promenade by the sea as well where there's a big double-decker bus you can sit in or around to have a bite to eat so when we arrived I had a sourdough bacon butty which was nice and we shared a couple of hash browns and yeah it was a nice little meal we had and it was easy to get to from the station incidentally because the station is right next to where the beach is pretty much which isn't the case for a lot of seaside towns so that was nice and convenient so yeah that was a nice little meal we had a little ice cream later from a place called follow the swirl which is just up one of the streets from the seaside and they do fruit flavor as well as chocolate and vanilla and stuff like that so that was nice and then we had some fish and chips from atlantis fish and chips later on as well which was very tasty and then apart from that we just had a general walk around really looking in some of the shops and had a little poke around in the old kent market which has got food places and other little stores in there as well and we had a little look in the turner contemporary art gallery but we couldn't make any sense of the abstract art in there 
uh, didn't seem to have much. So we weren't very impressed and soon came out again. I'm sure it's fine for some people, but it just didn't make any sense to us. So we didn't stay there. And then we just had a little bit of relaxation on the beach as well at one point. And yeah, it was just a nice day all together, really. And the weather was nice. So yeah, we did well. And then another thing Emily and I did, although not together this time, was see Guys and Dolls at the Bridge Theatre, which is by Tower Bridge. And this was an audio described performance. So Emily went with her mother. I brought my mother along and my friend Claire was also there as well. So it was a nice little group of five of us, although we were all spread out around the theatre. So we weren't all sat together. But yeah, we had a great time. And there was a wonderful touch tour beforehand with lots of things to look at. And then we had audio description during the show as well, which was really, really effective and really helped. And the staging of this particular adaptation of Guys and Dolls was really nicely done and really original because they had this huge stage area that you were looking down on from the seats that we were in. But a lot of the audience were down on the stage with the actors as well. It was made to look like a bustling New York City and there were people dressed as cops kind of moving people around between scenes. And the actors were performing on platforms that raised up in different configurations during the show. And it was just really impressive. And there was stuff coming down from the ceiling as well, like neon signs and stuff like that. And there was a live band as well up high on one wall. Songs are great, of course, if you know things like Stick Down and You're Rocking the Boat and songs like that. And yeah, it was just a really nice show. So I've written a whole blog post about that if you want a full review of it. But it was a really fun experience and I definitely encourage people to go and see it. And then talking of the South Bank of the Thames, which is where the Bridge Theatre is, this is also the area where the Morph Trail starts. Now, Morph is a plasticine character who I remember from my youth. But he's also still popular today because he's still got TV shows on Sky and he's got a YouTube channel and a social media presence and so on. And this trail has been created in aid of WizKids, which is a charity working with young people in wheelchairs. So it's designed to be step free and it's about celebrating diversity and promoting inclusion. So that's great. So there are basically six foot statues of Morph spread all over London and some mini statues as well in some of the buildings. And basically you can either use the app or a PDF map or a printed map to go and find them all. And if you use the app, you can actually enter codes on each statue and you get little rewards like discount offers and prize draws and things for each one that you find. And yeah, it's just a great way of going out for a walk, exploring London and finding all these statues. And there's lots of different creative designs of how Morph is dressed or painted or whatever. My favourite inevitably is the blind Morph who's got a yellow suit on with black braille markings with English lettering so you can see what each braille letter is and he's got a long cane and dark sunglasses. But there's loads of others as well. You know, there's a Royal Guard, there's a Pearly King Morph, there's one dressed as a tiger, there's a few with London designs on them and so on and so forth. There's loads. And I've made a blog post detailing all of them. So I was able to go around and find them all over a few days. So yeah, do go and check that out if you want to see them more. I've been posting them on Instagram as well day by day as well. So I've been able to show some of the artists that I've been able to find their artworks, which I've been very pleased with. So yeah, it's been a nice little trail to wander around. And if you're in London during the summer, I encourage you to try and find them because they are really nice to see. And it's all for a good cause as well. And then I also went to the Science Museum to see a couple of the exhibitions there as well. I went to the Science Fiction exhibition, first of all, which is basically an immersive exhibition with an AI character that guides you around. And it's a mixture of props, costumes and concepts and science fiction with real life science to see how things compare, you know, how close is science fiction to reality. And it's quite interesting in some cases, it's closer than you think sometimes. So there's things in there like Daleks from Doctor Who and a Cyberman as well. And there's also, as I say, scientific innovations too, like prosthetics that you can wear and things like that. So it was a really interesting exhibition. It's a little bit gimmicky because this whole AI thing, immersion thing, but it's fun. If you like all that kind of stuff, it's worth having a little wander around. And then the other exhibition is called Injecting Hope, which is about the development of the COVID vaccines. So it's about how they were developed and tested and everything else and then you know how they were first administered to people even the science museum itself was a place where people would go to have their vaccines administered so yeah that's a really interesting exhibition and a great way of celebrating everybody who, who worked on the vaccines it's nice to see them celebrated in that way so i've made a blog post about both those exhibitions if you want to read more about them and see plenty of photos because they are worth a look both those exhibitions and then the other thing i did this month was attend an anaridia day meetup on june the 21st at the barrel vault pub at st pancras station and these meetups are always a nice opportunity for for people with Anaridia to get together. It's always nice to meet people who are new to these meetups as well so they can see what a positive and friendly environment these events are. So that was good. That was a nice evening. And we've got the Anaridia Network Conference coming up in September, which I won't be going to. I can't get to that. But there'll be lots of other people there. There's lots of speakers lined up for it. And I have been to previous conferences, so I can attest to how interesting they are. So if you are affected by Anaridia in any way, whether you have it or you're a parent of a child with a condition or whatever, then do by all means go along to that because I can highly recommend those events. So then moving on to bits and pieces on TV next and the big thing I've been watching this month is the second series of Doctor Who from the modern era because this year I'm celebrating the 60th anniversary of the show by starting to go through all the series again. I'm not going to be able to get through them all before the 60th anniversary specials of course but I want to try and get through the David Tennant era if I can before that comes on. So I've done the second series now which is David Tennant's first season of course after Christopher Eccleston did brilliantly in the first series.
series, but I really like this series featuring David Tennant and obviously Billy Piper as Rose as well. It's a lot of good stories in there. It's really good fun. And obviously the ending is really emotional when the Doctor and Rose are separated. So yeah, I've written a really overly detailed post reviewing the Blu-ray still book that I've got and all the episodes and some other bits and pieces I've mentioned that I've found online as well. So do go and check that out if you've got a lot of time to kill and you like the show as well, just to see what I think of it. And in terms of drama, I'm also well aware that there's a new series of Black Mirror on Netflix as well, which I haven't seen yet, but I will get around to it and I'll probably check out the older episodes again as well and probably do a review of all the series because I like kind of doing that kind of thing these days. And there's various other things on Netflix I want to see as well. It's just finding the time to watch all these things, but yeah, I will get around to that. And then in terms of comedy, I'm pleased that Not Going Out is back for its 13th series, which makes it Britain's third longest running sitcom by number of series. If you go by number of episodes, then it's much further down the list, but by number of series, then it's in third place now. And it's still pretty funny, you know, it's past its peak, but it's still pretty good. Lee Mack is still very good at developing different scenarios and mining the different elements of comedy from them. He has one episode in this series where he's in a coffin for the entire episode, another where he's distracted by a beeping noise for the entire episode. So yeah, he's very inventive, and it was nice also to see blind comedian Chris McCausland as a guest in the train episode as well. That was quite fun with a nice little twist at the end too. So yeah, it's been a good series to watch. I have seen them all because they were all dropped on iPlayer at once when the first episode was broadcast on TV. So I was able to see all the episodes rather than waiting for them week by week. So it's nice to get that out of the way. But yeah, it's good to see that back. And then talking of Chris McCausland, I have also checked out his new travel show on Channel 4, The Wonders of the World I Can't See, where in each episode he's joined by a different comedian and they travel to a different part of the world and they try to describe things to him. So I saw the first episode with Harry Hill and that was all right. You know, there were one or two amusing moments in there, but it wasn't particularly fascinating or interesting either, really. And I'm not really bothered about the other guests he was having later in the series either. So I haven't stuck with it. I only saw that first episode. I mean, I'm not generally interested in these celebrity travel shows in general. There's a whole trend of programs where celebrities are going on holiday with their mates and I'm not really that bothered about them. So it's not my type of show, so I haven't stuck with it. But other people have been really enjoying it and I'm genuinely happy that Chris McCausland is having a lot of success by getting these shows. So yeah, fair play to him. Well done to him. But apart from that, there's not really a lot else to mention on the comedy front, to be honest. I mean, Haven't Got News For You has been good as usual. And the end of their series was timed very nicely with Boris Johnson's resignation, which was perfect for them. And I'm also glad that The Last Leg's back, of course. It's a shame that they've had to trim the season by two episodes because of Channel 4's cutbacks. But at least it's back for the time being until early August. And then I'm also well aware of Gold's celebration of Blackadder's 40th anniversary. I didn't watch that during June, so I'm going to mention that in my next video because I've now started going through it. And I'm going through the DVD box set as well because it's my 40th birthday this year so celebrating Blackadder's 40th anniversary is nicely times too. See I have seen the gold stuff now I'm just going through my DVD box set and I'll do a proper blog review of all that stuff and also Staged Series 3 finally came out on BBC One recently having been on Britbox for ages tucked away. I haven't seen that either because the DVD of it's coming out very soon anyway so I will get that and I'll binge watch all three series and again probably do a blog post review on it. And then the final thing to mention this year really is the Glastonbury Festival which I don't mention every year because a lot of the acts on there don't interest me and I would never go to the festival in person but the BBC do great coverage of it every year with so much choice about all the different performers and stages that you can have a look at so I do tune into it every year and listen to a few of the acts or watch a few of them either live or by catch up you know it's nice to have some things on in the background while I'm working for instance or to watch some stuff on TV in the evening so this year's been no exception and I thought I would actually outline some of the acts I've tuned into this year so in terms of the top 10 going from bottom to top as it were I saw Candy Statton this year I'm not hugely familiar with her but she did some good stuff like Stand By Your Man Suspicious Minds, Young Hearts Run Free, of course. She did all right for 83, give her a juice. And um, Fatboy Slim was there. And I'm not hugely into dance music, but I did grow up in the 90s when his music was becoming popular. And there is some of this stuff that I like. So while some of this stuff here was a bit weird, there was some stuff I knew. And it was nice to hear little things I recognised, like vocals from Don't Stop Me Now and Eye of the Tiger. And they were nice things that made my ears prick up when I heard them. And the Lightning Seeds were there as well. Again, I'm not hugely familiar with their music, but I did know a few songs like The Life of Riley and Pure and Three Lions, of course, which they did as their finale. Texas were there 24 years after their previous appearance at the festival and they did a great set of catchy songs several of which I knew actually including I Don't Want a Lover When We Are Together Black Eyed Boy In A Smile Say What You Want they did a cover of Suspicious Minds as well and Charlene Spiteri who was the lead singer was very good at interacting with the crowd too so that was a good set The Pretenders were there too of course they're another legendary band and they did songs like Back on the Chain Gang and Don't Get Me Wrong and Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters
songwriters joined them on the drums for Tattooed Love Boys and I'll Stand By You is another song they did so that was a good little set Guns N' Roses were there too and I don't know a lot of their stuff beyond their greatest hits really and some of the stuff I have heard beyond their greatest hits isn't amazing but there were some songs in here that I knew like Welcome to the Jungle Live and Let Die on the 50th anniversary of that song Civil War Sweet Child of Mine November Rain and they brought Dave Grohl out on stage as well to join them for Paradise City and then we did get Dave Grohl's own band as well the Foo Fighters they did a set of their own they'd actually been billed as a surprise guest they called themselves the churn ups on the lineup so nobody knew who it was until they gave it away on social media shortly beforehand and again I don't know a lot of their stuff and I probably should actually with the Foo Fighters because I have a lot of respect for that man so the only songs I really knew were Best of You and their finale Everlong but I also enjoyed some of their other tracks they performed as well like All My Life and No Son of Mine and Show Me How which featured Dave Grohl's daughter so yeah that was a nice set as well it was nice to hear some songs I hadn't heard before but then moving into my top three then Rick Astley was there who may only well be known for a few tracks or one track in particular let's be honest and at the age of 57 he obviously can't sing as well as he used to when he was younger but nevertheless he gave a cracking set he had the crown in the palm of his hand throughout and he closed the set in style as well he performed Whenever You Need Somebody with a bit of Good Times by Sheik thrown in as well he then got on the drums to play and sing a cover of ACDC's Highway to Hell which I hadn't expected to see but was surprisingly good and then of course he did an extended version of Never Gonna Give You Up at the end which was really really fun lots of festival volunteers were kind of dancing away in front of the stage kind of instinct they'd obviously learned all the dance moves together the guitarist got to do a bit of a solo playing the riff from We'll Rock You by Queen and the drummer and the bassist also got nice solos as well so that was a really good set Rick Astley did also perform a Smiths cover with a group called The Blossoms in the evening on that day as well but I didn't see that because I'm not a Smiths fan but Rick Astley's solo set was really good and then Blondie were there as well and as much as Candy Statton is older I was very much blown away by how good Debbie Harry still looks and sounds at the age of 77 she's still got it I mean she's 78 now she had her birthday a few days later but at the time she was 77 while her voice isn't in its prime by any means these days it's still recognisable she's still got that classic voice that we all recognise and she was clearly enjoying herself the crowd were loving it everyone was in on it together and the backing band were excellent as well even though the music mixing wasn't great they did drown her out a bit really sometimes but nevertheless it was still a fun set to watch and there were lots of classics like One Way or Another Hang On The Telephone Call Me Atomic Rapture The Tide Is High Heart Of Glass Maria Dreaming etc lots of great songs there so that was a really fun set but then of course the best act of the weekend and the one that became the most watched Glastonbury headliner of all time because of so many people tuning into the live coverage on the TV was Elton John who was performing what looks like it's going to be his last ever touring show in the UK so it was a big deal and at the age of 76 he has still got it and he made the absolute most of the opportunity banging out hit after hit after hit and one after the other it was a solid set and you know when he's really knocking out some smashes in the first half and there were still some huge songs to come in the second half that he's got an incredible catalogue so it was a really really good set we had things like Pinball Wizard The Bitches Back Benny and the Jets Daniel I guess that's why they call it the blues Philadelphia Freedom Are You Ready For Love with guest artist Jacob Lusk from Gabriel's and there was a song called Until I Found You in amongst that which is by a guest artist called Stephen Sanchez that Elton performed with him and that just shows how much she's supportive of up and coming young stars and then he got back to his own stuff again with like Your Song Candle on the Wind Tiny Dancer Don't Go Breaking My Heart with a Japanese singer guesting with him on that one instead of Kiki D Crocodile Rock with the crowd joining in the participation part in the chorus there Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me which was dedicated to George Michael and would have been his 60th birthday and then he finished with Rocket Man as well with lots of fireworks and an extended jam finale as well which was quite fun so yeah it was a brilliant set and a brilliant way for Elton to go out so yeah that was really really good fun and that is it that is my June roundup done I hope you enjoyed that and found bits and pieces of interest in there for you as I said earlier there's a lot more detail in my blog posts accompanying this which I've put links to in the description below so do go and check those out if you want more detail on any of this stuff in terms of July, I haven't got anything special booked or planned for this month because my focus is now on my 40th birthday next month in August. And I've already got a few bits and pieces planned for that that I'm really looking forward to. But I've already done a couple of nice things in July and there are one or two other things I want to do as well. So there will be stuff to mention for my July favourites. And I hope you have a good month as well, whatever you choose to get up to. I hope the weather stays nice for you now we're getting into the summer. But yeah, that is it really. So thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. As per usual, have fun and I will see you for another video very soon. Bye for now.